Hi everybody, in this video I'd like to give you an overview of how I use SciFinder. SciFinder is an incredibly powerful tool for a synthetic organic chemist. It is essentially a search engine that has access to peer-reviewed publications and patents. And within it, for a given molecule or functional group, you can look up molecular properties, you can look up chemical vendors, and most importantly, you can also look up synthetic schemes for a given molecule or a functional group. So let's take a look at how you can use this tool. To access SciFinder, we're going to type in scifinder.cast.org. And the first time when you log into this website, it's going to ask you for a login and a password, which I'm guessing you've already created by this point. And then the subsequent times when you try to log in, it's just going to take you to the homepage. And on the homepage of SciFinder, on the left is the menu that you can use to search whatever it is that you're searching for. The ones that I use the most frequent are the substances and the reactions submenus. Uh, today we're going to try to find a molecule and we're going to try to find the synthesis for this molecule using the substance identifier and the reaction submenu. So we're going to start with the substances and there are two ways in which I typically search for a given molecule. One way is the substance identifier and the other one is the chemical structure. So we're going to start with the substance identifier and in the substance identifier box you could either use the name of the molecule or the cast number or any other meaningful identifier that you know about this molecule that you're searching for. Um, I'm going to start with just the name and I'm going to look up harmine. And once you've typed in and hit search, you'll see that the molecule comes up and it is exactly what I was looking for because this is the structure that I wanted. But notice the name here that is listed is the IUPAC name, which is kind of crazy and I, I wouldn't be able to name this molecule off the top of my head. So now that you see this molecule and you can, if you click on it, it will take you to a bunch of useful information for this compound. So like the molecular weight, the melting point, boiling point, all kinds of like physical properties about it. You could also look up the spectra. So you could look up the predicted NMR spectrum for this molecule. You could also look up uh, experimental spectra. So like NMR, IR, mass spec. And to get those, you would just have to click on these links to take you to these papers that include the experimental spectra. But today we're mostly interested in how to synthesize this molecule. And one easy way to find that information is to just hover over the molecule here, find these two arrows here, click on the arrows and click on synthesize this. And this will show you a list of various ways in which people have synthesized harmine. Notice that there are a lot of options for how to synthesize this molecule. So you can narrow it down by various options. So if you go back up, you can see that you can analyze this search through various items like reagent or catalyst or document type, journal name, uh, product yield, publication year. There's all kinds of options if you want to narrow this down. And I think for just the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to focus on the first one. So typically when I'm searching for a synthesis for a given molecule, I'm looking usually for yield or if I wanted to use a specific reagent to make that molecule, then I typically will kind of refine it by the reagent. Um, but today we're just going to start with whichever one is the first one. So in this first synthetic route by Lucas Enders and co-workers, it looks like they're starting with a methoxy derivative of tryptamine and ethyl aldehyde and then they use an oxidation reaction to get to this final product. And you could get the details of this reaction by clicking on view reaction detail. And this might give you a little bit more information. So this kind of breaks it up into two different stages. You can see that the, this procedure involves two steps. The first step is the reaction with ethyl aldehyde to create this saturated derivative of harmine. I think this might be harmaline. I'm not sure. And then the second step is the oxidation to create the final product that we want. Now notice that it just gives you the reagents, but it doesn't give you any kind of procedures for how you would make it. And to get that information, you probably have to go to the original publication. So this one was published in Journal of Catalysis Science and Technology in 2021. So this is a recent paper. And now we need to get access to this paper. So we're just going to take the title and we're going to take it to Google Scholar. So now let's open up a tab for Google Scholar. So scholar.google.com. And then we're just going to paste the title. And here it is. Now, if you click on it, this will take you to the actual website where the article was published. And if you're on Chico State's VPN, you should be able to read and view the article. 
All right, let's see what these authors did to make the compound that we want. So if we scroll down, we'll eventually get to their synthetic scheme. So this is almost is. So this is information about their um, oxidation step using the catalyst and oxygen. And this is also some table about the oxidation. But I kind of want to see the entire scheme where they um, start with the tryptamine. I'm not seeing it here, but maybe we can find it in the SI. So let's see. So here's a table, and from this table, we want compound 2C. So we want to make compound 1C first, and then we want to make compound 2C at the end. So that's our final product. Um, let's see if we find any synthetic schemes here. I'm not seeing anything. So nothing about forming the 1C compound. So if you don't see anything useful in terms of the synthetic procedures in the main paper, you might have to go to the supplementary information. And yeah, I'm not seeing anything here about the synthesis. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go up and click on this DOI link. This will take us to sort of the home page for this article on the journal site. And on the right, you'll see that there's supplementary information. So let's go ahead and click on this and see what this gives us. I'm kind of cheating because I've already done this before. Uh, and let's see, here we go. So here's the supplementary information. This contains all of the kind of nitty gritty for a given paper that the authors didn't really want to sort of convolute their main conclusions with. So this will include all of the synthetic information, some spec spectroscopic information, and so on and so forth. And this one's a very, very long one. You can see it's 94 pages, a lot of hard work by these um, researchers. And you can see here this table, this table of contents tells us that if whatever molecule you want to synthesize, the synthetic procedures for it will be found on a given page. So we're trying to synthesize harmine, that is 2C, but we also want to synthesize 1C first. That's our first goal. So let's go to page five and see what we find there. Ah, here it is. So here is the first step of the reaction that we want to do. And we can take a look here at how exactly they synthesized it. So you can read this paragraph and then sort of modify the procedure for yourself if you were to actually do this reaction. And if you keep scrolling, eventually you'll get to, ah, eventually you get to the reduction reactions. Here they are, oh, I skip one. There you go, this is harming. This is how they synthesize the final product using their clever oxidation technique. And this is what you would do if you were to try to follow their procedure and do this in your own lab. So this successfully gave us the synthetic route for a given product, but notice that it didn't give us any mechanistic information. So if you're a student and you're trying to figure out a mechanism, that is something that you're just gonna use your own brain for, your own kind of knowledge and intuition about mechanistic organic chemistry. So most papers will not provide you with a mechanism. All right, so this was one way of searching for a given molecule. So let's go back to SciFinder and let's try finding the compound that we want using the different way of searching for a molecule. Now we're gonna go back to the homepage of SciFinder and instead of using a substance identifier, we're gonna try to use a chemical structure. So let's go ahead and draw the molecule that we want. And I'm gonna try to draw harmine again just to kind of repeat the process. And you could draw rings by using these ring templates or if you needed to draw kind of chains, you could just use the pencil tool by selecting carbon and selecting a single bond. And you could do this. There's also a very convenient chain tool. So if you wanted to make a molecule that had a really long chain, you could just use this tool. So you just click on a carbon and drag it and it gives you a very long chain as long as you want. But for us, we are not gonna be drawing chains. We're gonna be drawing harmony. And if you wanted to just undo what you did, you would just hit control Z on your keyboard. All right, and the way that I typically draw these heterocyclic rings is I, I just connect the benzene rings to whatever I want, and then I replace the carbons with any kind of heteroatom that I'm trying to replace. So in this case, we're gonna have a couple of nitrogens. So let's put a nitrogen here, and let's also put a nitrogen right here. And remember in harmine, there was a, oops, there was a methyl group there. So let's go ahead and click on a carbon, and then click here, and then that gives you a methyl group. 
And there was also a methoxy group on the other ring. And you could draw that by drawing this ethyl group first and then replacing the carbon with an oxygen here. I'm missing a hydrogen atom on this nitrogen in the center. But it doesn't really matter because SciFinder will sort of give you all of the options for this molecule. So if you just search for this structure without the hydrogen, it will broaden your search. So let's go ahead and see what SciFinder gives us if we don't put the hydrogen there. So of course you can put the hydrogen there and then you'll get exactly what you were searching for. But if you don't put the hydrogen there, it could kind of broaden your search. Ah, and notice that this gives us a lot more options, right? So the first search, when we just straight up searched for harmine, we got harmine and nothing else. Now, when you search it with a structure method instead, you're going to get various derivatives of it. You're going to get deuterated ones. You're going to get all kinds of other ones. And this could be kind of useful if you wanted to sort of see what other related molecules people have made. But for me, I'm just trying to see how to synthesize harmine. So let's go back to the first page. And usually the most relevant structure is going to show up first because it's sorted by relevance. But you could also sort by molecular formula. And again, the oh, this is crazy. Oh, I don't know what this is. This is weird. Maybe that's not a good uh, way to search for things. You can search by molecular weight, and it'll usually give you the lowest one first. So yeah, this is, again, just harming. Um, it could search by number of references, which I'm guessing harming is going to be the top result for, again. And it could also, this is kind of handy if you're trying to buy this compound as a starting material or something like that. You could also search by number of commercial sources. And again, harmine wins out. This is a very, very common compound. It's actually produced by plants in a lot of plants. So now that we kind of found the compound that we're looking for in this search, let's go ahead and again, click on this double arrow and you click on synthesize this. And you're going to get the same results as you did last time. And you can follow the same procedure for finding the actual synthetic route. All right, so that's using the substance identifier. So let's go back to the SciFinder homepage. All right, so now instead of searching for the substance, we're going to search for reactions. So let's go to our reaction structure. So here you can search for very specific reactions, like starting with very specific starting materials and showing the products that you want to make out of them. But you can also use this more broadly. Instead of searching using starting materials, you could just search for a product. Let me just draw harmine again. All right. And I'm going to leave off the hydrogen again. And now if you just press OK while you're in the reaction mode, it's going to ask you, do you want to search for reactions where this is a product, a reactant, a reagent, reactant or reagent, or any role. So I want it to be a product. So I'm just going to select product and search and search. And notice that here you're going to get slightly different results than you did when you clicked on synthesize this. And that is because in this case, it's giving you the synthesis for not only harmine, but also derivatives of harmine. So all these deuterated derivatives of harmine, all the other substituted harmines. So this is a much broader search when you search for a reaction than when you just search for the synthesis for a specific substance. And then once you found the synthesis that you like, you're going to do kind of the same thing where you just search that article that you're interested in, go to Google Scholar, search for that article and so on and so forth. Now I kind of want to go back and just sort of show you how you can play around a little bit with this reaction option here. So what if you wanted to, you're just really obsessed with this molecule and you want to learn more about like where this molecule is used and you want to search for reactions where this is a reactant rather than a product. So you could do that very easily and you could either do this by again just clicking OK and choosing whatever option you want here. Or another way to do it is to use these arrows. So if you use an arrow and you point at the molecule, then it'll give you reactions where this molecule is a product. 
Whereas if you use the arrow and you point away from the molecule, then it's going to label it as a reactant. And then when you search for that, it's going to give you reactions where harmine is used as a starting material. But again, because I didn't specify all of the hydrogens, you're going to get reactions where substituted versions of harmine are also used. So this is kind of interesting. If you are planning on doing reactions with this molecule, you can just look to see what people have done uh, and what people haven't done, I guess, as well. So it looks like the most popular reaction is where the methyl group gets removed and instead you make an alcohol version of it. I'm guessing this is probably some somehow biologically active, so maybe that's why there's a lot of interest in this. And if you want to read any of these papers, uh, just to kind of see what applications are available for these types of molecules, why these syntheses are important, then again, just search for the title in Google Scholar and read the introduction. All right, well, there's a lot more to SciFinder than this. This is a very powerful tool for organic synthetic chemistry, but this will just at least help you get started for searching how to synthesize various molecules that you're interested in. All right, so I'm just going to end the SciFinder tutorial here. Hopefully you'll be able to find a lot of useful information using this tool.